but the real concern in here is return to sender. You only need three, but I have zero. Because it only requires three kills, if there was ever a challenge that I would consider boosting for to get it done, it would be this one. Boosting for a return to sender doesn't seem like laziness, because it isn't a lot of work, it's a lot of luck. This challenge isn't a grind, it's an incredibly lucky situation that I feel like I have no control over and I don't know if I will ever complete. A couple of times I've seen people throwing out C4 and I'll try to shoot it as fast as I can, but it's never quick enough for it to blow up in their face. Well for now, I'll leave it alone and hope for some luck. What's going on guys, my name is Nostalgia FPS. Before anything starts here, I want to say that intro was clipped from a guy named Sour. It's a prestige recap video summary, basically talking about the hardest challenges in Modern Warfare Remastered. Sour is an amazing source for challenge guides in all the Call of Duty games, and I want to make it clear at the beginning of this video, he did not boost for that challenge. He got all three legitimately, but what he was trying to say was, that challenge requires so much luck that it seems like it could almost never happen. If he would boost for a challenge, it would be that one because there's no specific way to make it happen. People that boost do so on challenges that require a huge grind, but that takes away the value of the challenge or the camo that you're going for. In this specific instance, there's just almost no way to make it happen except for boosting. So all that being said, I actually managed to do this challenge legitimately and I did the first two parts in 60 seconds. I had never even seen an opportunity up until that point and I managed to get two in the same game. The third one wasn't in the same gaming session, it was maybe a week later, but still, being able to do the challenge at least in one prestige was really cool for me. And also, before I jump into the actual clip of the 2 and 60 seconds and then the third leg of the challenge, I want to show you guys what I thought was going to be my first part to the challenge. In this clip that you're seeing here, I call in an airstrike and it falls on the A side of crossfire and it actually triggers somebody's claymore. Even though Return to Sender's challenge says shoot their own C4, you can do it with claymore as well. So since the claymore was triggered and I got an elimination on the guy with his own claymore, I thought I was going to get the first part of the challenge. What I actually got was counter claymore, which was get an elimination on somebody with their own claymore. What makes Return to Sender so much harder is I had to trigger his own C4 or claymore with a bullet rather than an airstrike explosion so there's a specific way that you have to do it every time all right here's the start of the first clip i'm gonna let the gameplay play out and then i'm gonna come back after all the challenges are complete and talk about challenges in modern warfare remastered Alright, well that was Return to Sender Challenge 1, 2, and 3, and I honestly didn't think I was going to get a single point towards this challenge. Truthfully, I don't even know why I was running Bomb Squad, because I never run that, but uh, thankfully I did on that BOG game, and I was able to get those 2 in 60 seconds. Like Sour was saying, it's just complete luck, especially that third part on the Pipeline gameplay. I had no idea I was going to complete the challenge there, I was just trying to throw a grenade in a room. That's the case with so many challenges though, it's just a lot of luck. Of course there are things that you can do to make things simpler or you know make things easier like with return to sender you can run bomb squad but that doesn't guarantee the situation is ever going to happen. I think it's really cool that Modern Warfare Remastered has challenge mastery sections so like there's bootleg challenges which are like the basic beginning challenges and then there's valor which are like some of the better achievements you can do in a game like 30 kill streaks stuff like that and I like that they have a mastery kind of animated calling card for each of them. Some of the sections though have really impossible challenges. For instance, the prestige challenge has get to level like 950 or level 1000, and that, that just takes like 30 days of playtime. So the challenge system in Modern Warfare Remastered is not perfect, but it gives you something to look forward to and try for while you're going through the prestiges and going for exclusion zone if that's what you like to do. 
When challenges are a grind, I don't like to try and get them all done at once. Like let's say headshot challenges for instance on the M14 assault rifle. If I'm going to be doing that challenge, I don't want to get all 150 headshots in one day because I'll go crazy. Instead, I like to spread it out into like 25 or 30 headshots a day, and then after a week, I've got that done. Whilst I'm doing that, I can be grinding the TDM leaderboard, so going for M14 headshots and TDM, and that way you're going for two challenges at once. And when I have a lot of free time, like around Christmas or, you know, New Year's, I don't like to do one game at a time. I don't like to just play Modern Warfare Remastered nonstop every single day. I like to include other games into my rotation, like... Uh, MW3 or something like that, doing challenges and leaderboards for that. That way Modern Warfare Remastered or the game that I'm playing isn't the sole focus on my mind and I can kind of think about everything else. It's pretty easy to get obsessed over a game or a challenge or something like that if that's the sole focus of your mind. Back to MWR though, I wanted to talk about prestigious. Um, I think the prestige emblems in COD 4 are some of the best, the coolest in the entire franchise. Modern Warfare Remastered added 10 more and then the level 1000 system. Honestly, I think this is the biggest grind out of them all, like harder than exclusion zone, harder than if you're grinding depot credits, anything like that. The amount of experience it takes to get to level 55 ready to prestige is more, it feels longer than any other Call of Duty game I've ever played. I've been playing this game for about 4 or 5 weeks and I'm only prestige 5, the medal of prestige 5 right now. It makes me wonder if I want to go to prestige 20, level 1000, or if I just want to stop at like 7 or 9 or 10. Sometimes I have to stop and remind myself that prestiging is the fun part of the game. When you're stopped at a prestige level 55, it, there's no reason to play unless you're grinding leaderboards or have another specific thing that you're trying to get. If I was to stop at a prestige in Modern Warfare Remastered, I don't know that I would stop at anything after 10, uh, just because I really like the OG 10 the best. To me, some really good ones are 3, 7, 9, and 10, but I've already passed 3. I think I might stop at 7 or 9. Well, I don't want this to be a solo podcast or anything like that, so I think I'm going to wrap up the commentary here. I am going to leave some gameplay in the background if you just want to chill. It's M14 on Winter Crash, and it was one of my better gameplays when going for Regal Assault Rifles. But uh, yeah, I'm going to leave that there. That's it for me. See you in the next one. Peace. Standing by. Are you AV?